NASA is entering a pivotal phase in its campaign to return humans to the moon. The Artemis III mission, now planned to launch no earlier than 2027, has advanced to the physical assembly of its rocket at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. According to NASA, the SLS rocket's engine section and boat tail, key structural components for the mission, were transferred to the Vehicle Assembly Building in late July 2025, initiating the meticulous integration process. Artemis III's primary aim is to deliver a crew of four to lunar orbit, where two astronauts will descend to the moon's south pole using SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System. A location never before explored by humans, this mission will mark the first crewed lunar landing since Apollo 17 in 1972. This latest activity reflects years of preparation and recent delays. NASA's updated schedule, set after technical issues, now places Artemis II, a crewed lunar flyby in early 2026, with Artemis III to follow as the program's first crewed lunar landing. According to agency officials, Artemis III's success is critical not only because it returns American astronauts to the moon, but also because it establishes the foundation for subsequent deep space exploration. Examining the moon's south pole may help scientists study potential water ice deposits, vital for future missions. The ongoing construction and pre-flight milestones ensure that Artemis remains a top priority for the U.S. space program, with Kennedy Space Center as its operational nucleus. The central feature of Artemis III is its ambitious plan to land astronauts at the lunar south pole, an area of unique scientific value. According to NASA, a crew of four will launch aboard the Orion spacecraft, riding the SLS rocket, but only two will transfer to the SpaceX Starship lunar lander for descent to the moon's surface. The other two will remain in lunar orbit aboard Orion. The astronauts are planned to spend about one week on the moon, conducting up to four surface excursions or spacewalks to collect samples, perform scientific experiments, and search for accessible water ice. To support the crew's activities, NASA intends to pre-position an unpressurized rover at the landing site. This rover, capable of remote operation, will enable astronauts to traverse distances of 5 to 15 kilometers from the landing module, expanding the range of scientific investigations. The South Pole region's permanently shadowed craters are believed to hold water ice, an essential resource for potential long-term lunar habitation and research, according to NASA scientists. Scientific experiments to be deployed include the Lunar Environment Monitoring Station, LEMS, designed to analyze crust and mantle conditions, as well as the lunar effects on agricultural flora, leaf payload, which will assess how crops respond to lunar environmental stress. International collaboration has been integral to Artemis III, with the Lunar Dielectric Analyzer LDA, payload being contributed by non-U.S. partners. Such experiments are expected to produce data crucial not only for lunar science but also for planning future human missions deeper into the solar system. But despite significant progress, Artemis III has faced and continues to confront a series of technical challenges. According to agency reports, Primary obstacles have included delays in the development of both NASA's Orion spacecraft systems and SpaceX's Starship human landing system. Technical issues cited range from heat shield problems and life support system valves on Orion to timeline setbacks in Starship testing and integration. NASA's Office of Inspector General previously identified that necessary spacesuits being developed by Axiom Space with design input from Prada would not be ready before April 2025 at the earliest, likely contributing to the mission's slips from initial targets. An additional factor has been NASA's decision to include advanced science payloads and rovers, which require extensive pre-mission surface operations. According to NASA, the agency remains in the process of completing systems integration and environmental testing for Artemis-specific hardware at multiple facilities, including the Mashad Assembly Facility, for SLS structural sections, and the Neil A. Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building for the Orion capsule. The European Service Module, a critical component supplied by ESA, was delivered in September 2024, marking another milestone toward readiness. Looking at the bigger picture, these technical, logistical, and workforce challenges are considered typical for deep space crewed exploration and reflect the inherent complexity as NASA prepares to return to the moon. The Artemis III timeline is influenced not only by technical progress but also by the evolving landscape of space program funding and policy. According to public documents and NASA,
the United States Human Exploration Roadmap is being re-examined under changing fiscal priorities. The administration's fiscal year 2026 budget, published in May 2025, proposed ending the use of the SLS and Orion vehicles after Artemis III, citing high per launch costs that surpass $4 billion. Should this proposal be enacted, Artemis III could become the last lunar mission utilizing current heavy lift systems, prompting reassessment of future Artemis missions architecture and reliance on commercial alternatives for deep space access. In anticipation of these uncertainties, NASA has also internally evaluated alternative mission plans, including a test of Orion Starship docking procedures in low Earth orbit should lunar landing prove unfeasible within the original schedule. Such contingencies align with international calls for cost-saving and program adaptability. Meanwhile, bipartisan congressional oversight continues to scrutinize Artemis spending and timelines, sometimes leading to revised projections and further complexity. Despite these challenges, NASA maintains that Artemis III remains a crucial milestone, integral not only for scientific and technological achievement, but also for sustaining international partnerships and ensuring American leadership in lunar and interplanetary exploration. Looking ahead, Artemis III is seen as a stepping stone toward more ambitious space exploration goals, including a potential crewed mission to Mars. According to NASA, the cumulative knowledge gained from Artemis III, ranging from surface operations at the lunar south pole to planetary protection practices and crewed deep space logistics, will directly inform the design and risk assessment of missions beyond the Earth-Moon system. The program's integration of commercial partnerships, as seen with SpaceX and Axiom Space, alongside multinational scientific collaboration, illustrates a shift in how large-scale exploration campaigns are conducted. NASA emphasizes that modern Moon missions are no longer solely demonstrations of national capability, but foundation-building efforts for a broader era of solar system exploration, emphasizing sustainability and international cooperation. Artemis III, therefore, functions both as a technological demonstration and as a diplomatic and scientific milestone, with its legacy expected to ripple across decades of future missions. As hardware assembly continues at Kennedy Space Center and teams prepare for further assembly and testing, officials and engineers remain focused on overcoming technical and fiscal barriers, aiming to enable a safe, scientifically valuable return to the lunar surface within the decade.